G'day guys, we've got a microeconomics question today where we've been asked to consider the generalised Cobb-Douglas utility function for these goods X and Y. And from that utility function, we're asked to find the Marshallian demand functions for both good X and good Y. So basically what Marshallian demand is, is we ask ourselves how do we maximise our total benefit or total utility for a given income. So the optimization problem, hopefully you'll be able to understand from there, is we've been asked to maximize utility, so u, which in this case is equal to x to the power of alpha, y to the power of beta, subject to a particular income constraint. And with regards to the goods x and y, our income constraint is going to be just our income will be fully spent and we're going to spend it on the, using the price of X and the amount of X that we buy plus the price of Y times the amount of Y that we buy. So this is our optimization problem that we have to solve. Now the way that I'm going to solve it is I'm going to use the method of Lagrange where I um, take partial derivatives of a Lagrangian function so first, before we have to do is we have to set up our Lagrangian function. So the Lagrangian function, L, is equal to our objective function, which is the function we're trying to maximize, x to the power of alpha, y to the power of beta, plus the Lagrangian multiplier times the budget constraint made equal to zero. So I take P of x, x take p of y, y, and what we're going to do is we're going to take partial derivatives of this with respect to x, y, and lambda. And our optimal conditions will be when those partial derivatives equal zero. Cool. So let's start with our first order conditions. So our first order conditions are that the partial derivatives of the Lagrangian function equal zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our derivative of Lagrangian function with respect to x. And we find that that's equal to a x to the a alpha, so that's supposed to be an alpha, take 1, y to the beta, minus lambda times the price of x. And that's got to be equal to, you guessed it, 0. Now what we do next is we've got the derivative of the Lagrange with respect to y. So we're just taking our partial derivatives. And that's equal to beta x to the alpha, y to the beta take 1, and then we're going to take away lambda times the price of y. And again, that guys, that equals 0. And then we finally, we take the derivative of our Lagrangian function with respect to the Lagrangian multiplier, lambda. And that's just going to be equal to I take p of x, x take p of y, y equals 0. Cool. So what we can do to start with is we're going to combine these two Lagrangian functions so we can get rid of our lambda value. And what we find is I'm going to take in one foul swoop I'm going to take this over to the other side and this over to the other side. And then I'm going to divide the top one by the bottom one. So let's just move that up here. And what I get is I get the price of x over the price of y is equal to ax, the alpha take 1, y to the beta. Sorry about my handwriting there, guys. Over. B 
beta x to the alpha y to the beta take 1. Now, from there guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of these up the top. So I'm going to use a few index laws. If you're trying to remember some of your maths from way back in the day, I'm going to go a to the n over a to the m is equal to a to the n take m. So that's one of the index laws I'm going to use. And I get alpha over beta. Now I've got x to the power of alpha take 1, take alpha, beta, sorry, y to the power of beta, take beta plus 1. Because take beta, take take is plus. And this all simplifies down to alpha over beta, x to the negative 1, y which again simplifies out to alpha y over beta x and that's obviously the price of x divided by the price of y. Cool, so from here guys what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these um, this equation in terms of the price of x x and the price of y, y. The reason I'm doing that is so I can substitute it back into this income constraint up here. So, let's go about doing that. So, I'm going to have the price of x times x It's going to be equal to, I'm going to move the price of y up there. So I've got alpha times the price of y, y over beta. Cool. And for the price of y times y, that's going to be equal to, I'm going to move that up, that down, and that up. So I've got beta price of x x over alpha. Cool. So now what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to use these two parts to substitute in to there and there in this equation so I can get a income constraint with respect to the income, the price, and one of the goods. So let's try and do that. So I'm going to have income is equal to the price of x times x plus, and rather than writing the price of y times y, I'm going to write this, beta times the price of x, x over alpha. Now I can factorize this, guys by going the price of x, x equals, plus, oh sorry, outside of 1 plus beta on alpha, which again is equal to the price of x, x, and we can make that alpha over alpha, and we get alpha plus beta over alpha. Cool. So then what I can do is from this part, I can get this equation i equals this in terms of just x. So x equals something. So I'm going to have x is equal to the income divided by the price of x times alpha plus beta all on alpha, which is equal to the income, and you can take the reciprocal of this and put it up the top, alpha over 
alpha plus beta all divided by the price of x and that's equal to our, opt, our Marshallian demand of x. So what we can see here is that the amount we're going to demand of x and the price are obviously inversely related as the price of x goes up the amount we want of x goes down. As our income goes up, the amount of x that we want will also go up. So you can see that that makes sense in real life. So let's carry on. We're going to also do exactly the same thing. I'm going to try and separate this first part that we did. So I can start it down here. I'm going to use the income. And now instead of going p of x, x, I'm going to write alpha. P of Y, Y over beta plus P of Y, Y, which, like we've done with the X one, is equal to, we can factorise it, alpha plus beta plus 1, which is equal to P of Y, Y bracket alpha plus beta on beta. Cool. Now, from here, we're going to make everything in terms of y. So we're going to have, we're going to move the p of y over and the alpha plus beta. So we're going to have y equals the income divided by price of y times a plus alpha plus beta all on beta, which is then we can say that that's the Marshallian demand for y is equal to i. I'm going to put this in the numerator. Beta over alpha plus beta divided by the price of y. Cool. So let me just write down what the price of x, the Marshallian demand function for the, the x one is. So we've got an x and y over the top of each other. i bracket alpha over alpha plus beta divided by the price of x. Cool. So guys, they are our Marshallian demand functions for x and y. So what do we do here? Well, to start with, it's all a bit higgledy piggledy. We started by describing our optimization problem. We need to maximize this given a particular income. Once we've done that, we I use the method of Lagrange. If your examiners have taught you anything different, I just I hope just do that, I guess, but then why are you watching this video? So we use the method of Lagrange. From that, we got our three first order conditions, which all have to equal zero. If we want to find an optimal point, like in two dimensions, we know that our optimum point is when the derivative is zero. dy dx equals zero. So those are our optimal points where all of those, the Lagrange with respect to our three variables equals zero. From that, we took the price of x and the price of y to basically eliminate lambda and we were able to using a little bit of algebra come to this relationship here. From here we we're able to derive the functions in terms of price of x times x and price of y times y which will allowed us to substitute them back into our income constraint. Once we've substituted them back into our income constraint, we're on the final stretch, and we can then get our Marshallian demand functions for x and y. In terms of the income, 
the pr and the price. So I hope this video helped, guys. If it did, give it a thumbs up. It makes my helps my channel out. Um, subscribe, subscribe. I put new videos out all the time. But you know, until next time, guys, just keep practicing these sort of problems, and most of all, just keep enjoying your economics.